So good morning, everyone, and welcome to this lecture. This is uh, lecture number three in uh, alternating current, and we will try to wind up your alternating current in today's lecture. Let us have a quick uh, recap of what we had done in the previous class. In the previous class, we had seen the different types of uh, AC circuits. We had seen the combination of LR, RC and LC circuit and we had seen how we can find out the current, the RMS current, the peak current, the impedance in all these cases. The impedance in all these cases is given by this formula R square plus XL square ka root or R square plus XC square ka root. I hope uh, you remember this. In today's class, we will move ahead and uh, see the last type of uh, circuit. And the last type of circuit that we are going to see is uh, LRC. All the three elements coming together. Uh, LRC a uh, series circuit. Now, how does the LRC series circuit look like? Obviously, it just looks like the same we have all the three elements now coming together l r and c we have a ac source that is connected like uh, this now what we are going to do is we are going to allow a current i and as you can see this current is going to be the same in all the three elements you can call the potential across the inductor as VL. You can call the potential across the capacitor as VC. And you can call the potential across the resistor as VR. As all of you know this, this EMF E, the applied EMF, AC source, that will be equal to VL plus VC plus VR. As all of us know this, if I write the value of this E, this E is E0 sin omega T. The potential drop across the inductor is L di by dt. The potential drop across the capacitor is Q by C. The potential drop across the resistor is v, uh, I into R. I into R. Now, we basically have to add these three. But uh, how are we going to add these three? To add these three, we will uh, use the phasor diagram. Otherwise, this becomes a very complicated second order differential equation, which cannot be solved. So what we are going to do, we are going to draw the phasor diagram. And how we are going to draw the phasor diagram? We can see that the current I is there. This current I is going to be same in all the three elements. I hope you understand this. So what we have done previously, the same thing we are going to do. We are going to draw the phasor. The phasor of current to start with, this is the phasor of current I in the circuit. Now, as soon as you draw the phasor of the current, we understand that the phasor of voltage across the resistor VR, it would be in the same direction VR. It's in the same phase. Current and voltage across the resistor are in the same phase. So I and VR are in the same phase. As soon as you get the, you get the position or the phase of VR, you can draw the Phasor of L, VL, and as you can see, in inductor, the voltage across the inductor is ahead. So this becomes the phasor of voltage VL. Then we have to draw the phasor of the third uh, element, and the third element is your VC voltage drop across the capacitor, and it is lagging the current by a phase angle of. Uh, 90 degrees. So here is the phasor drawn. So now I have four phasors, phasor of current, I, VR, VL, and VC. 
Now there are different cases possible. What are the different cases that are possible? You can see here that this uh, VL and this VC are opposite of each other. Now there are three cases possible here. What are the three cases which are possible here? Case number one. Case number one. Uh, uh, case number one. And what is this case number one? Your VL, the RMS value is greater than VC or you can say your XL is greater than your XC. Now, if your VL is greater than VC, or XL is greater than XC, no matter how you call it, what will happen is this. You can draw this diagram as the effective diagram here. Instead of taking VL and VC separately, we can just draw one phase up like this. Again, let me start. The phasor of current I is here. The phasor of voltage drop across the register VR is here. And since VL is greater than VC, what we have done is we have subtracted VC from VL and whatever remains is the phasor here. And this is the phasor of VL minus VC. VL minus VC. So the net thing remains the phasor of VL minus VC. Now I have to just add VR with VL minus VC. Now effectively, if you see, this now becomes an effective RL circuit. Even though the circuit is a LRC circuit, but VC is less than VL. So effectively, it becomes a VR circuit. Uh, uh, LR circuit, we just have to add these two phasors VR and VL minus VC and you will get the phasor of the voltage E. So now I can write, I hope you understand this, this E voltage, the RMS value of this E voltage will be equal to nothing but VR square plus VL minus VC whole square. I hope all of you understand this. Yes or no? Now, going on the same line, this I, this E can be written as current I into Z and VR can be written as I into R. So this I will come out from everywhere and in the bracket you will have in the bracket, whatever remains will be your R square plus xl minus xc the whole square this would be what would remain if you understand this now we can understand and we can write the equation in this case what are the equations in this case we have to find out the value of the different quantities so let me start with the first one we started with the voltage ve is equal to e naught sine of omega t and now I can see the current. You can see E is here and current is here. This effectively is behaving as a LR circuit. I can write I is equal to I naught sine of omega t minus phi. What is I naught here? I naught here is E naught by z. What is z here? z here is nothing but under root of r square plus xl minus xc the whole square what is xl what is xc xl is equal to omega l xc is equal to 1 by omega c sometimes they may also ask you the value of tan phi tan phi can be written as VL minus VC divided by VR or you can write it as XL minus XC divided by R. I hope you understand what I'm saying. You can also ask you the value of cos of phi, which is the power factor. Remember the value of cos of phi is always equal to VR divided by E. So it becomes again equal to R by Z. Now remember, they can also ask you the value of VR and VC and uh, VL. 
as a function of time. So this is the time that you can write it. Vr as a function of time, how can you write it? You will multiply i by r. And remember, this is in phase. So you can just write the same equation, sine of omega t minus phi, where everything else is known. Now, if they ask you to write the value of VL, to write the value of VL, you multiply i with xl. But remember, this VL is ahead. This VL is ahead. This VL is ahead by a phase angle of phi, a phase angle of 90 degrees. So you write the equation minus phi plus phi by 2. If they ask you to write the value of Vc as a function of time, you multiply I0 with Xc. But you remember that this voltage will lag current by a phase angle of pi by 2, omega t minus phi minus pi by 2. Everyone understands this, yes or no? Well then, I will give you five minutes to note down everything in this case. And also, I'll give you five minutes to do case number two. What would be case number two? To do it in the same way for case number two. Case number two will be the case where Xc would be greater than Xl. I'll give you five minutes. Once you are done, please let me know so that I can move forward. You have to write this case and also the case where Xc is greater than Xl. Now, <clears throat> this was the case where Vl was greater than Vc. Now, I ask you to do the case where uh, Vl is greater than Vc. Have you done that case also? <clears throat> so, <clears throat> how are we supposed to do that case? Case number two. Vl, sorry, Vc is greater than Vl or your Xc is greater than Xl. In that case, <clears throat> What would happen? In that case, what would happen? Yes. In that case, what would happen is let me start if I draw the phasor of current first, I, the phasor of voltage Vr will be in the same phase, Vr. Vl, I've drawn smaller and Vc, I have drawn bigger. <clears throat> now in this case, again, we have to Repeat the same thing. Uh, what will happen is, <clears throat> in this case, what would be remaining would be your Vc minus Vl would be remaining in the downward direction. Let me again draw it. So I would have current and I would have Vr and what remains here would be only Vl minus Vc. So you now need to add Vl minus Vc with R and that would give you your net EMF which would be now lagging behind by a phase angle of phi. So this circuit even though, even though this circuit is LRC circuit, this circuit now just behaves, this circuit now just behaves as a pure RC circuit. Now I can write the equations here. I started with E is equal to E naught sine omega t. 
I will get I will be equal to I naught sine omega t. Remember now it is leading by an angle of phi. What is I naught, my dear friends? I naught is E naught by Z. What is Z, my dear friend? Z is now under root of R square plus XC minus XL whole square. You can also write it XL minus XC because it is squared. Doesn't matter. It's always better to write it XC minus XL so that you remember that C is greater than L. XL will be equal to omega L. XC will be equal to 1 by omega C. You can also find out the value of tan phi. Tan phi here will be VC minus VL divided by VR. You can write it as XC minus XL divided by R. They might also be interested in asking you the value of cos phi. Cos phi would again be equal to VR divided by the applied voltage E. Remember RMS values we are talking. So it will again come equal to R by Z. The last thing they could have asked you is the value of VR, VL and VC as a function of time. So VR as a function of time, you multiply I with R and keep the phase con same as the phase of current. So it becomes sine omega T plus phi to get the value of VL. You multiply this by XL, sine of, remember, the voltage across the inductor is leading by a phase angle of phi. So you, by a phase angle of 90 degrees, so plus phi, plus pi by 2, you add here. To get the value of Vc as a function of time, you know, you have to do this. Sine of omega t plus phi minus pi by 2. I hope all of you have understood this. I'll give you two minutes to note this down. Let me know once you are done. So this is the next question. The first question that you're going to do in a series circuit, R is 300, L is 0.9, Henry, C is 0.2 microfarad. Omega is 100 radians per second. You have to find the impedance of the circuit. I'll give you two minutes to do this. So how are you going to do this? Or any question that comes, R is given as uh, 300 ohms. Now you just have to calculate the value of XL. You will calculate the value of XL by multiplying it by omega into L. And you have to calculate the value of XC by one by omega C. Now once you get this as 300, the chances of the other combination will always be that it will come as 400. And you can check this. I think this is going to come as 900 ohms. And this value XC is going to come as 500 ohms. So basically, your Z will become under root of R square. Here, XL is greater than XC. It is XL minus XC the whole square. When you do it, it would be under root of 300 square plus 900 minus 500. That will be equal to 400 square. And your answer will turn out as 500 ohms. I hope you understand this. You will have to be quick in uh, solving this and getting the answer. I hope you understand this. Everyone gets this? Uh, that takes me to the next problem. And this is the problem which has everything coming uh, here. We have a circuit which has a voltage of, remember whenever voltage is given, it's always the RMS value of voltage that is given. The RMS value of voltage is 200 volt. Frequency is 50 hertz. You have to find the reactance of this circuit. When you say reactance, it is XL minus XC or XC minus XL. Whosoever is bigger. Then you have to find the impedance of the circuit. Then you have to find out the current in the circuit. Then they have given you. 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 
Then they have given you five voltmeters, which are AC voltmeters, hot wire instruments, hot wire instruments, hot wire instruments, which are going to measure the RMS value of voltage across different different elements. V1 is connected across the inductor. V2 is connected across the uh, resistor. V3 is connected across the capacitor. V4 is connected across inductor and register ka series combination and V5 is connected across all the three ka parallel com all the three ka series combination you have to find out the readings in V1 V2 V3 V4 and V5 and all the other things I'll give you two minutes to crack this problem so let us move ahead and uh, <clears throat> solve this question how are we supposed to solve this question we will find the value of xl xl is omega l that is 2 pi into frequency into l everything is given once you put the value of uh, 2 pi f and l i think you are going to get 200 ohms to get the value of xc what do you do you divide 1 by omega c that will be equal to 1 by 2 pi f into c. I think once you calculate this, you will get somewhere around 100 ohms. Now here what you see, this xl is greater than xc. So you can find out the reactance of the circuit. The first part, which is the reactance of the circuit will be xl minus xc, xl minus xc. And that would be equal to 100 ohms. Do we understand this? Yes or no? I hope we understand this. <clears throat> XL is greater than XC. Now you can find out the value of Z. R square plus XL minus XC ka whole square. And the root of this. R is 100. XL minus XC is also 100. So 100 square plus 100 square. And you will get this as 100 root 2 the value of z is going to come as 100 root 2 i hope everyone understands this yes or no no yes then i can find out then i can find out the value of rms current the value of rms current will be v rms divided by z the value of v rms 200 volt is the value of v rms so this would be 200 divided by 100 root 2 and the answer that you will get will be root 2 amps yes or no no yes that would be the answer for rms current now we have to find out uh, different different uh, values of v1 now remember <clears throat> this v1 is nothing but vl and VL will be equal to XL into I. Remember, we are talking about the RMS values and nothing else. So we just multiply this uh, uh, XL with the RMS value of current. The value of XL is 200. So this becomes 200 uh, root 2. The value of V2 is nothing but value across the register R, the RMS value. That will be equal to R into I, chi RMS value. That will become... 100 root 2. I hope all of you are able to understand this. V3 is nothing but the value of capacitance, the voltage drop across the capacitance. That will be equal to Xc into I RMS current. That will be equal to 100 root 2. The only thing that might give you a lot of, uh, of trouble is V4. Remember this V4 is the voltage across the series combination of uh, L and R, so this is the LR circuit. LR circuit, you just multiply this current by the value of Z, and the value of Z for that circuit would be I into under root of R square plus XL square. Do we understand this? That is the value of Z for that circuit. Once you do that, R square plus XL square, I think, and you multiply it. The answer that I have is 100 root 10 volt. Now, once you find the value of uh, V5, that will be equal to I multiplied by the combination of that Z. Total Z. And total Z is uh, 100 root 2. So, it's I multiplied by 100 root 2. 
and if you multiply i by 100 root 2 you will again get 200 volt this 200 volt as you can see is the applied voltage and it should always come same i hope we have understood this yes or no no yes and you were also able to solve this circuit I'll give you one more question on this. I hope you have noted this down. I'll give you two minutes to note this down. I'll give you two minutes to note this down. This is the next circuit. You have got all the three elements V, R and C. Let us solve all these questions here. What are the questions that you are going to solve? I will give you all those questions. Question number one is to find out the X, matlab impedance. Uh, matlab, uh, X means react, uh, reactance. The second question is to find out the value of Z. The third question is, is to find out the value of I. I means RMS current. The fourth is to find out the value of cos phi. Cos phi means it is a power factor. The fifth question is to find out the average power. All these questions. If you do all these questions, that means you have covered everything that is possible to come in this particular topic. I'll give you two minutes to get me the answers. I hope uh, you were able to do this. Let us start. How are we supposed to find this? XL is given as 20 ohms. XC is given as 10 ohms. So the impedance of this circuit X, you can call it as XL minus XC. Here XL is greater than XC. That becomes 10 ohms. That is the answer for the first part. To find out the impedance of this circuit Z, you just have to find out R square plus xl minus xc whole squared it's very simple z will become r is equal to 10 xl minus xc is also coming as 10 this becomes 10 root 2 i hope all of you have got this answers moving on to find out the value of i i is the rms current to get the value of i rms current you just have to divide v rms i am not writing by Z, V RMS. Now, remember this 100 that you see here is not the RMS value, it is the peak value. To get the RMS value, you have to divide this 100 by root 2 and you multiply this by 10 uh, root 2 and that would be your answer for this one. I think the answer would be 5 amperes. Now, to find out the value of cos phi, you don't have to do anything extravagant. You just have to divide R by Z. R is a 10. Z is 10 root 2. So this becomes 1 by root 2. So your phi, the phase angle, becomes 45 degrees. I hope everyone understands this. It's as simple as it gets. To find out the power, I always love this formula. It is I square RMS multiplied by R. I square RMS is 20. R is 10. So the answer would be 250 watt. These are the answers, my dear friend, that I was looking for. I hope you have got the answers. I will give you two minutes to note these things down. Since we have done this, now we can move ahead and see the third case. What is the third case? Case number three. Case number three will occur when VL becomes B equal to VC or XL becomes equal to XC or omega L becomes equal to 1 by omega C or omega becomes 1 by root over LC. In this condition, in this condition, you have to remember that impedance of the circuit is minimum and that minimum impedance becomes equal to R and the circuit behaves like a pure resistive circuit. 
the circuit behaves like a pure resistive circuit the voltage e and the current in the i are in the same phase the current i and the voltage drop across all the three elements will be in the same phase the current the rms value of current the rms value of current would be maximum because impedance is minimum this condition is known as the condition of resonance this condition is known as the condition of resonance and the frequency at which this happens is known as the resonant frequency resonant frequency resonant frequency is the frequency at which this happens so the value of this resonant frequency if i say omega naught angular frequency that is 1 by root over lc the resonant frequency f naught is 1 by 2 pi under root lc do we understand this this is known known as the condition of resonance so what are the things that you must remember about uh, resonance i will again give them in these points and then we will see everything put together So, in resonance, you can see point wise, I have put it XL is equal to XC, VL is equal to VAC, phase difference is zero, power is maximum, the value of current is maximum, and these circuits are used for voltage amplification. I hope you have noted this down. Yes or no? I'll give you two minutes to note it down. So let us just uh, quickly go through what we have done so far. This is a simple example of a LRC circuit. Here we have taken the case that VL is greater than VC. Everything just put um, in a formulated way. The equation of current I is equal to i naught sine omega t plus or minus phi depending on vl is greater than vc or vc is greater than vl the equation of voltage will be like this depending on vl is greater than vc or vc is greater than vl the impedance of the circuit would be like this it will be xl minus xc whole square if xl is greater than xc it will be xc minus xl the whole square if xc is greater than xl phase difference tan phi will be vl minus vc divided by r in first case, it will be VC minus VL divided by R. And these are the different, different forms. I'll give you two minutes to note this down. And then let's move on to write everything together. If XL is greater than XC, the next reactance will be inductive. It will behave as a LR circuit. If XC is greater than XL, it will behave as RC circuit. If both are equal, that is the condition of resonance. Impedance is minimum, potential becomes equal to potential across R, the power factor becomes 1, I and R will be in the same phase, the power consumed, you've already written it down, the current will be maximum, this circuit is used in voltage amplification, I will give you 2 minutes to note these things down. Then we have uh, these graphs, these are very important graphs, these are graphs between current and F. You can, if if you are confused with V, V is frequency, impedance NF, admittance NF, XL and XC NF, and X NF, where F is the frequency. You can see at uh, resonance, the current is maximum. Before resonance, frequency less than resonant frequency, F less than F naught, the circuit behaves as a RC circuit. 
when f is greater than f naught it behaves as an rl circuit because here xl will become greater than xc before that xc will be greater than xl you can see impedance becomes minimum admittance which is the inverse of impedance i'll give you all those formulas again becomes maximum this is the graph of xl with xc xl and xc with f before impedance xc is more so the graph is in the negative side after free after the resonant frequency f naught the graph is on the positive side remember all these graphs any of these graphs can come i'll give you two minutes to note this down then uh, if you draw the graph of power with frequency or omega naught we will see that at resonance the power is maximum and this maximum power we have already written the formula for this maximum power what was the formula for this maximum power what was the formula for this maximum power do we remember this this maximum power was half v not into i not or v rms into i rms there are two points where your power becomes half so at this point the power is 1 by 4 v not i not at this point also the power is 1 by 4 v not i not these are known as half power points one half power point is before resonance the other half power point is after resonance the difference between the two is known as the bandwidth bandwidth of resonance do we understand this this is known as the bandwidth of resonance at all these two points the current becomes i max divided by root 2 the maximum value of current divided by root 2 that becomes your current at these two power points do we understand this do we understand this everyone and you can also note that the difference in frequencies omega 2 minus omega 1 can be written as l by r the value of delta omega can be written as l by r i'll give you 2 minutes to note this down again moving on to one of the other term that might come as a question in your exam is the quality factor quality factor of resonance uh, of circuit now this quality factor you have to remember these definition may not be definition they might ask you the formula so there are different different formula and different different uh, definitions given here i will try to make you understand and make you remember all this quality factor q is 2 pi into the ratio of maximum energy stored to the energy dissipated that is one way of remembering it you can also remember it in this form maximum energy stored divided by mean average energy dissipated multiplied by 2 pi by t quality factor can also be remembered as vl by vr or vc by vr because both are same so this becomes omega not l by r or 1 by omega not rc or you can write it as 1 by r into root over l by c or you can write it as 2 pi f not upon f2 minus f1 where f2 minus f1 is the bandwidth the more the number of values the more the number of ways in which you can remember this power factor or this quality factor the better it is there is nothing much to understand here you just have to remember these definitions i hope you can do that I'll give you 2 minutes to note this down everyone understands this i hope so we'll have to remember these values nothing else then we move ahead and remember these things what is the sharpness of reson resonance why do we measure the quality factor we measure the quality factor to find out the sharpness of resonance how sharp is resonance here you can see in the case of blue 
resonance is very sharp here you can see in pink it is very blunt if the value of q is very high resonance is sharp bandwidth is less if the bandwidth is more we call it blunt so sharpness of this resonance is inversely proportional to the bandwidth and the resistance are just have to remember this and you just have to remember these diagrams i will give you 2 minutes to note this down and this is the first uh, question in lcr circuit the capacitance is changed from c to 4c for the same resonant frequency what would be the new value of l what would be the answer for this one we know that omega not is 1 by root over lc we need the same resonant frequency so root over lc should be a constant or for the same resonant frequency l into c should be a constant l into c is a constant c has changed from c to 4c so inductance l must change from l to l by 4 and that is the answer that we are looking at i hope you have got this question <clears throat> are you one understands this okay that takes me to the next question and the next question is here like this a series lr lcr circuit is connected to a battery of external voltage e 200 sin 100 pi t the values of the capacitance and the resistance in the circuit are 2 microfarad and 100 ohm respectively the amplitude of the current in the circuit will be maximum when the inductance is how much and i'll give you 2 minutes to solve this so how are we going to uh, solve this question see uh, it is given that the amplitude of current has to be maximum now what do you mean by the amplitude of current has to be maximum this is the case where the circuit would be in resonance i hope we will understand this that at resonance impedance is minimum and the amplitude of current or the rms value of current or any value of current is maximum because impedance is minimum so we just have to put the condition of resonance xl will be equal to xc or i can say omega square is 1 by lc so l will be equal to 1 by omega square into c that is what you need to put here 1 by omega the value of omega from what i see is 100 pi so 100 pi square multiplied by 2 into 10 raised to the power of minus 6 microfarad and i think once you solve this you would end up here 50 by pi square henry and that my dear friends is the answer for this one this is the value of inductance for giving maximum value of current or amplitude of current have you noted this down everyone yes or no okay that takes me to uh, this question the next question and it comes on your screen now you have three different voltmeters connected here one is connected across the inductor one is connected across the capacitor and one is connected across the resistor the values of the voltmeter across the inductor and capacitor is given you are supposed to find out the readings of the emitter the current in the circuit 
and the value of voltage V. I'll give you two minutes to give me the answer. Well, what is the answer for this one? This is a straightforward question. Both the inductor and the capacitor have the same voltage. This is the case of resonance. Even if it was not a case of resonance, you could have found out the voltage drop across the register. The total voltage V is always given as root over Vr square plus Vl minus Vc ka whole square. Here Vl and Vc are equal. So V will be equal to Vr. So the value of V is uh, 220 volt. Once you get the value of V, RMS value of V, you can divide it by the resistance because the impedance of this circuit is zero. You will get the value of RMS current. So the answers are 220 volt and 2.2 amperes respectively. I'll give you a minute to note this down. Well, let us move on to the next question. And this is the next one in the series LCR circuit. L is increased by 25%. And C is decreased by 20%. What will happen to the resonant frequency? What will happen to the resonant frequency? I'll give you two minutes to solve this. So how are we supposed to do this? Let me call the original value of L as L and the original value of C as C. Now, L is increased by 25%. So, the new value of L, L dash becomes L plus increased by 25%. 25% of L is L by 4. So, the new value of L becomes 5L by 4. I hope you understand this. The new value of C dash, C, C dash is decreased by 20%. So, C dash becomes C minus 25% of C, C by 5. So it becomes 4C by 5. The new frequency, F dash, oh, sorry, let me not call it F dash, omega dash. Omega dash is 1 by 2 pi root over L dash, C dash. And when you multiply L dash with C dash, you will get 1 by 2 pi root over LC. And that is equal to the original frequency. So as you can see there, my dear friends, the resonant frequency, even if I change 1 by 25% and the other by 20%, I increase 1 by 25%, I decrease 1 by 20%, it remains same. I'll give you one minute to note this down. Let then move away to the next uh, heading of this. Uh, uh, is nothing but a choke coil. Once you had uh, tube lights, which were not LEDs, it had a choke. Choke coil, whenever you hear the term choke coil, you don't have to write this. This is just for theoretical purpose. A choke coil is nothing but it is a LR circuit. So whenever you hear about a choke coil, and this is the diagram that should come into your head, a choke coil is nothing but a LR circuit. Apart from that, I don't think they are going to ask you theoretical questions on this. It consists of a copper coil, thick copper wire is used so that the resistance is L, soft iron is used so that the inductance is high, the XL is given by omega L for an ideal choke, nothing is ideal. For an ideal choke, resistance has to be zero. In any case, choke coil is nothing but a series LR circuit. I'll give you two minutes to note this down. Let us move ahead and solve one uh, question based on this so that uh, we are able to understand what type of question comes. And this is the question that might uh, come. An ideal choke coil, ideal choke coil resistance is zero, takes a current of 8 amperes when connected to an AC source of 100 volt and 50 hertz. A pure resistor under the same condition takes a current of 10 ampere. If the two are connected in series to an AC supply of 100 volt and 40 hertz, what is the current in the series combination? You will get four, two minutes to solve this. 
So what you have to see here is that the frequency has changed. Initially, the frequency was 50 hertz. Now the frequency is 40 hertz. So from the first statement that is given, 8 amperes when connected to 100 volt, you can find out the value of XL. XL, that will be equal to VRMS. I'm not writing RMS, divided by I. So 100 by 8 will be your XL in first case and that will be equal to 2 pi into L into F and F is given as 50 hertz so 2 pi in L into 50 that will give you the value of L the inductance and the value of inductance will be 1 by 8 pi now you can get the value of resistance resistance is 10 uh, so sorry, 100 divided by 10, this is equal to 10 ohms. Now, once it is connected to a 40 hertz supply, you can find out the value of XL dash. XL dash will be 2 pi F into 2 pi F into L. 2 into pi into F is 40 multiplied by L is 1 by 8 pi. That will give you the value of L as 10. Again, I told you that once as a point, if this is coming as 10, you can bet that the other one is going to come as 10. The impedance of this circuit becomes 10 square plus 10 square per root, 10 root 2. And then you can get your answer, the current. Remember, we are talking about the RMS value of current. That will be equal to 100 divided by 10 root 2. So your answer will be 10 by root 2. So you can write it as 5 root 2 amperes. That is the answer, my dear friends, that we were looking at. I'll give you a minute to note this down. Well, then we can move on to the next uh, heading and the last heading of this chapter. And the last heading of this chapter is basically transformer. What do you mean by transformer? A transformer is a device that can change the magnitude of the alternating uh, EMF or alternating current. Remember, a transformer cannot be used for a DC. You cannot easily change the value of DC current or DC voltage, but you can very, very easily change the value of AC voltage or AC current. It basically consists of primary coil, the pink one and the secondary coil, the green one in the primary coil, you apply the primary voltage, input voltage and, oh, sorry, and you get the secondary voltage or output voltage from the secondary coil. I hope you know this. Yes or no? No, yes. Remember, you can change the value of voltage or current, but the frequency will remain constant. So the frequency F of the voltage will remain constant. The only thing that can be changed is the only thing that can be changed is the only thing that can be changed is the amplitude or the magnitude of alternating voltage or alternating current. I'll give you two minutes to note this down. Let us move ahead and uh, look at the other things. The only thing you have to remember is primary, secondary, primary, secondary. Uh, the core is made up of soft iron so that uh, the losses are less. The voltage in the secondary divided by voltage in the primary is NS by NP. If NS secondary is more than the number of turns in the secondary is more than the number of turns in the primary, it is known as the step up. If number of turns in the secondary is less than the number of primary, it is known as a step down transformer. I hope all of you know this. Yes or no? I'll give you two minutes to note it down. Note it down fast. You know all this, just note them down in very short steps. For an ideal transformer, the input power and the output power are equal. So secondary current divided by primary current becomes 1 by K. Everyone knows this. Step up transformer, secondary current will be less than the primary current. Step down transformer, secondary current will be more than the ideal current. And if you find it in the ratio of their impedances, it will be proportional to the root of their ratio of impedances. I will give you a minute to note this down. Everyone knows it. Just note it down fast. Remember, law of conservation of energy is applicable. It is applicable everywhere. 
Now, whatever we have done, ES by EP is equal to IP by IS, input power is equal to output power. This is only applicable if the transformer is ideal. For an ideal transformer, the efficiency is 100%. Efficiency cannot be 100%. But the efficiency of a transformer is very, very high. It can be as high as 99%. How do you find out the efficiency of a transformer? Output power divided by input power multiplied by 100. This is how you can find out the efficiency of a transformer if it is not 100%. If, you, if I want to write it in the form of a formula, this becomes... EP, sorry, ES into IS divided by EP into IP multiplied by 100%. I hope you understand this. What are the energy losses? Copper losses due to the resistance of coil. Eddy current loss. There was a question based on this. Repeatedly, the core gets uh, magnetized and demagnetized. Because of that, there is loss of eddy current and hysteresis as well due to flux leakage. The flux in the primary and the flux in the secondary, whatever flux is there in the primary, the same flux does not come in the secondary. And therefore, we have some losses here. I'll give you two minutes to note this down. All these are theoretical aspects, and I think you would be knowing them. Then, apart from giving you simple questions on the ratio of uh, EMF, giving you a different one, a 50 hertz AC current of Crest value, maximum value 1 ampere or RMS value 1 ampere flows through the primary of a transformer. The mutual inductance between the coil is 1.5 Henry. What is the peak voltage, crest voltage or RMS voltage in the secondary coil? Apart from giving you simple questions based on VP by IP is equal to IS by v, uh, IP. I'm giving you this question. I'll give you two minutes to solve this. So how are we going to solve this question? Remember, remember this transformer works on the principle of mutual inductance. The current in the primary is changing. And because of that, the flux in the secondary is changing. Mutual inductance, mutual inductance. So this is a revision of mutual inductance. So the EMF induced in the secondary coil EMF induced in the secondary coil will be M into DI1 by DT, where DI1 by DT is the rate of change of current. Rate of change of current. Rate of change of current in the primary coil. This is what you must understand. Now, mutual inductance is given as 1.5 Henry. How much the current has changed? Now, it's an AC current. So it goes from zero to peak, zero to maximum, zero to maximum, zero to maximum in one by four of the time period. So the change in current will be one ampere divided by the time period divided by four. Remember that AC cycle, we, we, we. The current changes from zero to maximum in T by four seconds. How do you find out the time period? How do you find out the time period? The frequency is given. So the time period becomes 1 by 50. So T by 4, the time it takes to go from 0 to maximum will be 1 by 200. And therefore, the answer will be 1.5 into 1 divided by 1 by 200. That would be the answer that you will get. Remember this question. This is one of the tougher questions that can come in your GE on AC circuits, on transformers. The most likely question that is going to come will be based on the ratio. And I think you should be able to solve that question on the ratio. You already have the sheet with you. The sheet will be having questions on those simpler topics. So I'll wind up this class here. We are done with your AC. We are done with your AMI. The only small part that remains in electromagnetism is EM waves, which we will complete in the next class tomorrow. And then we will move ahead with the next topic, which is modern physics. I'll take your leave. I hope you have understood today's class. Take care and have a nice day. Bye-bye.